So again, the point being, video content has to be an important part of our digital marketing mix. I'm just curious, how many people today would you say that video is a critical part of your marketing mix? Okay, so maybe half. How many people want to do more with video? Okay, good. Okay, so how do we approach video? Well, I talked about our three pillars. So one of the things that that's, I think that's important or to understand from our perspective where we have a little bit of a leg up is that in, you know, we make our money from selling product. But for 50 years, we've been publishing content. We used to publish content through these things called the Wilton Catalog, Wilton Yearbook. They were like a, a, an annual magazine. Um, so we have a whole group of folks internally that are content creators. We've transitioned them from creating content for publications to creating content for digital and, and other things. We've also been teaching for 85 years, and so we have a whole bunch of resources dedicated to education. So we'll talk a little bit about this, but even if you don't have these resources, if it, even if it's not as easy for you to create content, there are still ways to participate in video and take advantage of it. This is how we think overall about digital. And what's important here is the question that, some, that everybody asks is, how do you measure success? And we have this conversation every time in a meeting with our, with our um, senior management, and I'm going to have the same conversation, I'm sure, at our board meeting next week, is, OK, great. It's great that you're seeing the success on Facebook or YouTube, but how many products did you sell? How many people did you sign up you know, for our service? In our case, it's products. Well, we don't look at it quite that way as that direct linear funnel. We look at it as, hey, if somebody's in an ecosystem like Facebook or YouTube, that's where they're going to want to interact with you. And I'll show you some examples of how we've got them sort of cross the channels. But ultimately, if you view one of our few, uh, videos on YouTube, our first goal is to get you to become a subscriber. Right? That's that engagement. Right? Now we know we've got them on our list, and we, now we have that ongoing conversation. There's, there's value in that to us. And if you go back and think about those charts I showed you, that initial bump in terms of YouTube traffic, that comes from your subscriber base. When you publish a video, the first folks that are going to look at it, discover it, are going to be your subscribers. Okay? Then after that, we worry about how to get you into other channels. Sign up for an email newsletter list, buy a product. And again, there are people that buy products from our YouTube channel or from, our fa from Facebook, our Facebook post. But the fact is, we really focus very much on how do we get that engagement on that platform. Okay, so our goal is we want to grow the activity. We want to get more people to do the things that we do, which is, in our case, more people to bake and decorate. Um, and then we want to grow our community. So as we bring people into the activity, how can we get them to connect with Wilton? Whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, we don't care. We want, to connect with, we want them to connect with us wherever they want to connect with us. Right? Back in the day, you know, it was all about trying to get people to your website, and get them signed up for a newsletter. And that's fine, and that's good. But ultimately, if we force that, we're going to lose folks. We know that by growing the activity and growing our community, we will increase the sales of our products. We'll increase brand awareness. We'll increase intention. We'll increase all those different things. But first, we're going to focus on how do we grow the activity and how we grow the community. So again, as we think about this, and we talk about this internally, we talk about how are we creating our own tailwinds. If you think about, and for those of you that might follow the activity a little bit, you know, a few years ago, um, cake decorating really got um, extra exposure because of shows like Cake Boss and Ace of Cakes and Cupcake Wars. And we saw a big benefit from that. The problem is, as those shows started to tail off, we lost some of those tailwinds. So for us as a brand, we focus on how do we create our own tailwinds. You know, we're not, we don't have, well, we have one Wilton store, <laughs> but we don't have, we, you know, we don't, most of our, all of our products are sold at places like Walmart and Michaels and Joann's and Amazon and, and Target, et cetera. Retailers usually aren't really good at communicating the value of your brand, right? They communicate that a lot of times in ways of 20% off, buy one, get one. So in an activity like ours, we want, to cr we want to create our own connections. We want to create our own tailwinds because ultimately that's going to be very important for us in terms of getting people to buy our product and engage with our brand. OK, so we don't think about creating viral videos. In fact, we pretty much sort of, there's two things that we've outlawed the terms in, in the office. One is blast, right, an email blast. The second one is viral, right? We don't think about making viral because it's like, a, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's like a product manager saying, hey, 
hey, guess what, John, you're, our, you're ahead of PD. We really want to create a billion dollar product. Will you go do that? Right? To create a viral video, it's really tough. But if we focus on creating content that our audience will love and content that is share worthy, right? Again, content that they will value so much that they want to share it, then we increase the likelihood that something will go viral or get, a wide, get wide reach, get wide viewership, um, have an impact. Okay, and a caveat about this is you don't need content to go quote unquote viral for it to be effective. And I'll use a baseball analogy since the Cubs were here this morning. You can hit a lot of singles and doubles and score a lot of runs. You don't need to just aim for the grand slam because those come few and far between. And so if you have a cadence, an ongoing cadence of content that you're providing to your audience, you don't have to define success by one single piece of content. Look at it collectively, look at it holistically. Over the course of a month, are you engaging more people than you did the month before? If you are, you're doing a great job. Okay, so we think about creating content. And this really go, you know, I'm talking about video, but this can go for anything. There's really three ways that you have to, three ways that you can really engage your eyes to provide value. You can inspire them, you can educate them, or you can entertain them. Brands at best usually can accomplish two of the three. It's really tough to do all three. Um, and it's really tough if you're like us and don't have a lot of marketing budget to spend on hiring really smart creative folks. Um, you know, if you think about, you know, entertain. Entertain, it's tough to be funny, to be amusing. I guess you could have cute puppies or kittens in all of your videos, but um, may not ultimately get you the results. You may, you may get likes, but you may not actually get brand affinity. Um, I think about, like, um, educate and entertain. Who remembers the uh, Blendtec? Uh, videos where they would put the, uh, the iPhones and different things in, in the video, right? That entertained you, but it educated you, right? It wasn't inspiring to do that yourself, right? But it was saying, listen, we're going to do something funny. We're going to talk about something as boring potentially as a blender and make it fun and entertain. But at the same time, we're going to tell you that you can put, if you can put an iPhone in this, it doesn't destroy it, you're certainly going to be able to blend a, you know, a margarita, right? Um, so again, as we think about content, as we think about what's going to entertain, what's going to educate, what's going to inspire the consumer, always think about that. 